a famine came to Israel. Elimelech, Naomi, and their sons went to Moab to find food. Elimelech died. The sons married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. Then the sons died too. The three women had no husbands. When the famine in Israel was over, Naomi decided to go home. Stay in Moab, she said to her daughters-in-law. It's your home. Orpah stayed, but Ruth said, Wherever you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Together, Ruth and Naomi went back to Israel. <gasps> It was harvest time in Israel. Naomi told Ruth to gather the bits of grain left behind in a field. The field belonged to Boaz, Elimelech's relative. Boaz approached Ruth. You were very kind to Naomi, Boaz said. Leaving home must have been hard. May God bless you. He gave Ruth food and told his workers to watch over her. Oh! <laughs> Ruth told Naomi what happened. Naomi smiled. When someone dies, his closest relative cares for his family. That person is their kinsman redeemer. Boaz is our kinsman redeemer. Stay close to him. So Ruth stayed close to Boaz. He liked her more each day. Boaz bought Elimelech's land and took care of Naomi and Ruth. Then he asked Ruth to marry him.
Ruth had a son called Obed. Obed's son was Jesse. Jesse's son was David, and David became Israel's greatest king. So God blessed Ruth just as Boaz had prayed. A voice in the night. Hannah was sad because she had no children. She prayed, and God gave her a son, Samuel. She was very grateful, so she gave Samuel to God to serve him. Hannah left her little boy at the tabernacle with Eli, the priest. Samuel helped old blind Eli. He even slept in the tabernacle while Eli slept in a room nearby. One night, Samuel heard someone call his name. He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am, he said. I didn't call you, Eli grunted. Go back to bed. Samuel crept back to bed. He heard his name again. Samuel ran back to Eli. Here I am, he said. I didn't call you, Eli sighed sleepily. Go back to bed. After Samuel heard the voice a third time, Eli said it was the Lord. If he calls again, said Eli, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel did. Samuel, God said, can you be my prophet and pass my words faithfully on to my people? I can, said Samuel, and he did, until he was an old man. Stones, slings, and giant things. Israel's first king was named Saul. King Saul did not obey God. So God said to Samuel, the prophet, Find a man named Jesse. One of his sons will be the new king.
Samuel found Jesse in Bethlehem. He looked at seven of Jesse's sons. They looked handsome and strong. Not them, God said. I don't care about looks. I care about what's in a person's heart. Jesse sent for his youngest son, David, who is tending sheep in the fields. Samuel saw him, and God said, He is the one. So David was anointed the new king. Huh? <gasps> Sometime later, Israel fought the Philistines. A giant Philistine soldier called Goliath challenged the Israelites to send a champion to fight him. But the Israelites were all too afraid. David brought food to his brothers in the army. He heard Goliath's challenge and was not afraid. How dare he defy God's army? asked David. I will fight him. Surprised, King Saul offered David his armor. No, said David. God help me kill wild beasts. He will help me against Goliath too. David took five stones and a sling. Am I a dog? Goliath roared. You send this stick of a boy to fight me. You have a spear, said David, but I have the help of Israel's God. David put a stone into the sling and threw it. It struck Goliath's forehead and knocked him down. The Israelites defeated the Philistines. With God's help, David was a hero. Fire from heaven. David became a great king. Then his son Solomon reigned. After Solomon died, God's people had many bad kings. King Ahab was one of the worst. His wife, Jezebel, worshipped the false god Baal.
Jezebel persuaded Ahab and God's people to worship Baal too. Because of their sins, God stopped the rain for several years. Then he sent his prophet Elijah to King Ahab. You have disobeyed God and worshipped Baal, Elijah said. Tell everyone, including the prophets of Baal, to meet me on Mount Carmel. I will prove who the true God is. Everyone gathered on the mountain. Then Elijah said to the people, Make up your mind. If the Lord is God, follow him. However, if Baal proves himself today, follow him. Baal's prophets and I will each kill a bull, place it on an altar, and pray. The God that sends fire to burn up the bull is the true God. Baal's prophets went first. They prayed to Baal all morning. No fire came. Maybe Baal is sleeping, Elijah laughed. Shout louder. So Baal's prophets shouted all afternoon. Still, nothing happened. Elijah built an altar. He put the bull and the wood on it. He dug a ditch around it. Then he had water poured over everything until the ditch was full. Elijah prayed, 
Immediately fire fell from heaven. It burned up the bull, the wood, the stones, and the water. The people bowed down and cried, The Lord is God. A Roaring Rescue God's people disobeyed Him, so He let their enemies take them into captivity. They destroyed Jerusalem and carried away many of the Jews to their own country, Babylon. Daniel was one of the Jews in Babylon. He trusted God and prayed to him three times a day. God blessed Daniel, and he became a powerful leader in that country. Some leaders were jealous of Daniel, so they made a new law. People could only pray to King Darius. Whoever disobeyed would be thrown into a lion's den. Darius agreed. <laughs> Daniel still prayed to God and was arrested. Darius was sad. He liked Daniel. He realized he'd been tricked but couldn't change the law. Daniel was thrown to the lions. The lions roared and crept up to Daniel. Then an angel arrived. It was God who sent him. The angel shut the lions' mouths. Daniel spent the night there unharmed. At daybreak, Darius went to see if Daniel was alive. God sent an angel to save me, Daniel said. The king was thrilled. Daniel was pulled out of the den.
Then King Darius had Daniel's enemies thrown into the den. The lions gobbled them up. King Darius told everyone in his kingdom to honor Daniel's powerful living God. The Brave and Beautiful Queen Esther was the Queen of Persia. Even her husband, King Xerxes, didn't know her secret. Esther was Jewish. Esther's cousin Mordecai worked at the palace and looked out for her. Xerxes' advisor, Haman, received a great reward. He was very proud. Everyone except Mordecai bowed down to him. Haman was insulted. He vowed to kill Mordecai and all the Jews. Haman told Xerxes that the Jews were dangerous and should die. Xerxes agreed and set a day to kill them. Mordecai was terrified and sent a message to Queen Esther. Change the king's mind, said Mordecai. If I go to him without his invitation, he can have me killed, Esther replied. Perhaps you were made queen just for this moment, said Mordecai. Esther bravely agreed to try. She went to the throne room. King Xerxes was amazed by her beauty and invited her in. Can we have dinner with Haman? she asked. Haman was building a big gallows in his backyard. He planned to hang Mordecai on it. Then the king's invitation arrived, so Haman went to the palace for dinner.
A man wants to kill me and my people, the Jews, Esther told Xerxes. Who would do such a thing? He asked. The evil Haman, Esther cried. Haman? Guards, put him to death. So Haman was hanged on the gallows he built for Mordecai. Because of Esther, the Jews were saved. They celebrated with a great feast, which they observe to this day.